Hi, this is Lori Failer, and welcome to my project on using a virtual circuit with a physical circuit. And I'll be doing that with vPython on a Raspberry Pi. So in this program, we're going to use a previous project that uh, had a physical RGB LED and three buttons, a red, a green, and a blue button. And those buttons controlled the brightness of each color in the RGB LED. I'll leave a link to the video that describes the use of the physical circuit and how the code worked and so forth. So this one will just focus on what we needed to do to incorporate the virtual circuit with this physical circuit and code. So um, what will happen is as I make changes to the physical circuits uh, brightness for the LED using those uh, physical buttons, red, green, and blue, um, on the screen, we'll see the virtual circuit, and the picture of it is up there in the um, upper corner. We'll see that LED's color change to match the physical one, and we'll also see the buttons actually uh, press at the same time that I press the physical buttons. So, kind of neat and just fun to see how we can use vPython to, um, to do virtual simulations, I guess. So, um, vPython is, is new to me, and I'm just beginning to understand how to use it, so I'm not an expert by any, by any means. But if you want to learn more about it, um, go ahead and uh, go to vPython.org. Lots of information and documentation there, great examples. So um, I think in general the thing to realize is that, of course, it's 3D programming, so you have sort of this 3D space, or scene, I think, as it's called, and in that scene, you know, it, it follows a three-dimensional grid, X, Y, and Z, which has a, it, which in the center of that scene is, is the origin, zero, zero, zero. And then you place objects in the scene, you know, by moving them around in that three-dimensional space by giving certain positions of where you want them relative to that origin. So um, definitely interesting, and it's... Um, I guess one of the best ways to learn it, I think, is just to kind of hack around and, and uh, try things out and see how they go. So next we'll talk about the uh, code that I used to create, the RGB LED. So uh, the first part of the code is setting the scene background. So I just wanted to use a gray background rather than a black background. And then, uh, then to create the LED, I uh, used a sphere and uh, then attached a sort of a cylinder on, next to it so that it creates that dome and then the, um, you know, the straight sides going down. And then the little ridge there at the bottom of the LED uh, is another cylinder that's made just a little bit wider. Um, and then if you uh, change the color of those objects at the same time, it looks like, the, it looks like one object being changed uh, and has all has the same color. Um, so when, when we go to change the brightness of this virtual LED, we'll need to change all three of those at the same time. The sphere, the long cylinder, and the little um, base cylinder at the same time. And you can also see I have uh, the four legs put in there. I'm not going to mess with those during the program. They're just going to stay fixed. And you can see that um, they're just set up to be right underneath the LED and they stick out um, kind of like the L leads of a real LED. Next thing I needed to make were some push buttons. So um, pretty simple. I just made a black base for the bottom of the button and then I had a little cylinder in there to um, kind of make the actuator that we see in, in those kinds of uh, push buttons. And then, um, again, because I wanted to show the button going up and down, I had to have code to kind of create uh, both pieces. So the top part uh, that I added on, the blue box, is there, and, and you notice the minus 4 is highlighted. So when I want to show the button being down, because I press the button on the real circuit, the physical circuit, well, then I'm just going to shift that blue button down, so you can see once I've created the object of the top of the blue button, I can then change it, update it by changing its position um, and moving it to a new place. And the same thing with the cylinder, of course, I've got to do something with that cylinder because it's in the middle there. So what I do is just turn it to blue so it doesn't show up. Um, and then, you know, when I want it to go back up again, I just go back to the 
previous um, way it was, move it back up into place and change the color of the cylinder so it's silver again. So that's how I made the button look like it's going up and down. Now here's the physical circuit that I had set up and if you want to learn more about this again check into the description. I have a link to the video where I described it uh, at length and, and also went through details in the code of how the circuit works, how those buttons control the, the RGB LED. And then last I just thought I'd show this is what the full um, virtual circuit looks like. So just the three buttons and the LED. I didn't get much more detail to it because I was kind of working on making this button push. Um, and boy, uh, I found on my Raspberry Pi that it got pretty hot just uh, working with this. So the thought of putting a lot more uh, detail into it, I wasn't sure how well it would continue to work. So that's my excuse for why I don't have a breadboard and all the wires and everything showing it all connected up. Um, but uh, Anyways, it was fun to get this far with it. So next I'll show you a little bit of the code that I used to control this project. So here's the code I used to implement this project. And uh, this uses the backbone of the code that I did in a previous video where we ran the physical circuit controlling the RGB with three buttons. I'm not gonna go through that code in detail again. Um, I'll leave a link to that video, so if you really want to see how the physical part of the circuit uh, was coded, um, you can go back and look at that. I discussed this code in detail there. Um, in this case, I'm just going to show uh, how I added the virtual uh, circuit to, to this program. So um, we'll import the vPython library, and then we'll skip over the setting up of the physical circuit and get up to the point where we're using vPython to create uh, a virtual LED. And um, I just went ahead and set the canvas to a gray color. Um, I like that better than the black. And then uh, these uh, objects all kind of create the RGB LED and it has the four legs coming out of it. And there are the appropriate lengths for the four legs for the LED. And then I needed to create the three buttons, the red, the green, and the blue button. And so I have a button base, um, and that's in black. And then there's a little cylinder to where you actuate the button. So I put that together. Uh, that sits right on top of the base. And then there's the button top, um, which is uh, in the appropriate color uh, for the top of the button. So I do that for the green and the blue, so almost identical. And then um, getting into the while true loop, uh, we have the rate statement for the vPython. Still trying to understand that a little bit better, but um, left that at the uh, defaults we've been using before. And then there's a few things to do. We, uh, as discussed before, we understand that perceived brightness of an LED follows the nonlinear scale, and of course that's uh, all that what this code does, and again I've explained that in detail in the previous video, but um, when it gets to the um, virtual uh, color, then uh, then I needed to add something um, on, a, on a linear scale, because it didn't operate in the color brightness um, on a nonlinear scale, so I just added a, a fixed amount, so based on how many presses the user asks for, um, I'll just add a portion of that uh, each time, and that seems to match better than trying to run the um, virtual LED colors the same as I do the real world LED. So that's the difference there. Um, so make a small change to that. And then the other thing I wanted to do was to make the button actually look like it was pressed when you press it. So this means that the button has been pressed if you're in this part of the code. So then I'm just going to shift the top of the red button down, for example, just a little bit. And um, I just turn the cylinder to the color red so it kind of it disappears into the top. Um, and that makes it look like it got pushed down. Um, so that's how that works. And then you do the same thing for green and blue. And then when you get to the bottom of the um, loop, as you start to do your resets for the physical circuit, um, well, you need to do the color adjustments for um, 
the LED, so those three pieces that make up the light part of the LED have to be shifted to the new color that's been uh, created by pressing the button. And uh, then I also want to reset the button because I, I, if it got pushed, it, it looks down, but I just reset it so that it's in the proper place where it looks up again here at the bottom of the loop. So that ha that's how it has that uh, look like it's being pressed and then let go of. So uh, I thought that was kind of fun. And uh, in the end, it turned out to not be too hard to do. And it didn't seem like I needed to add a lot more delay or anything to it to kind of make it work. So this seems to work pretty well. And so then we keyboard interrupt to get out and clean everything up. So the program is now running and you can see the uh, virtual uh, LED and the three buttons. So I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit on them. You can see what they look like and uh, pretty happy with how that looks. And uh, you can also see this is the output. I'm printing the number of button presses and the red, green, and blue LED levels in the uh, physical world. Um, so the number of button presses is the same between the physical and the virtual, but the LED level is on a nonlinear scale for the physical world and on a linear scale for the uh, virtual world. And then here's the circuit. Got it all ready to go. So I thought I'd kind of zoom back and hopefully I can show uh, how it looks from so you can see everything at once. So I'm going to go ahead and press. And you can see, hopefully you saw the red button go down. And uh, do it again. And you can see the two coming together. And I have this set for six button presses to take it all the way to the top. So that's uh, full on for the physical world. and along for the uh, virtual world. So let's see the... I'll go ahead and turn the red off and we'll just zoom in a little bit. And you can see the green button going down as I press. That's full on. There we go, fully on. And now off. And let's see the blue. Fully on for both and then off. So what a fun project. Really enjoyed learning a little bit about Virtual Python and how we can mix it in with our physical circuits and uh, have some fun. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, project and thanks for watching.